Thanks indeed for staying with us. The program is this morning on ITV on this all important uh, Saturday morning, not Saturday anyway, uh, post Saturday uh, when everyone have not spent yesterday as Salah would today be celebrating the uh, post Salah. You got two days public holiday, so today we're going to get one big bank, Millennium Bank. I don't know why everyone in the SDT. So love that place. You go there. Hey guys, no parking space. Unity Fountain is fully choked. No parking space there. Uh, everyone tripping there. No space. Everywhere is just choked. Finally, but anyway, it's our time. Let's catch our phone. That's why we are part of existence now. Many have lived, they played their own role. They've gone out of existence and now we have to enjoy. It's time for us now to talk aviation. And when we discuss aviation, we will be going through and understanding how it works. We've been talking about airport security, talking about how to ensure that where we are is safe for us to actually do business, do business within the context of our boarding, uh, the kind of preparation for boarding, boarding, taxi, takeoff, and whatever we look around the airport, uh, security is what we should be doing. Now, quickly, let's uh, uh, bring on board here. Yeah, that's, that's what I want to see here, quickly. Uh, Mr. Godwin N. E. K. is uh, has been one who has been uh, every morning coming through this path here to ensure that we get educated, uh, informed as well as we know our own uh, aviation environment very strongly here. His telephone number is on the screen, the email, uh, the blog, uh, the YouTube channel, Twitter handle, or you can follow us. Above all, he's in on set with me this morning. Again, a very wonderful morning, sir. But I was Back telling you, I was, I was 100% sh very certain that you won't be coming on the program. <laughs> that if you got, if you give Mr. Godwin N.E.K. a Friday, a Monday, a Friday, a Saturday, uh, a Sunday, a Monday, Tuesday, five days in one uh, public holiday, uh, then he should actually uh, be flying to some part of the country to do some other things here. But I was so setting on when I just, hey guys, <laughs> had to tell you good morning, sir. Welcome on the program. Oh, uh, thank but, you. But you never traveled this time? Uh, well, um, mindful of this morning because uh, we are starting a brand new series uh, this morning and um, it's so important, so important, quite very really, really important to me that um, I, I personally deliver this rather than uh, uh, delivering uh, from a remote location, you know, um, we are dealing with aviation development in Nigeria and the role of FAN in managing and securing our airports. And by the way, my dear viewers, FAN means Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, FAN. Okay, uh, yeah, but, but, so but before, before, before you kickstart yeah. this new topic quickly yeah, now, yeah. Uh, let me ask you from your own perspective, yeah. uh, what's the role of the military personnel? who are stationed before the toll gate at Abuja Airport uh, as part of airport security? Well, yes, it's, it's part of the uh, security architecture uh, for the um, airport. It, it, they're just not there. You would notice um, some, you know, electronic equipment, uh, you know, uh, stationed there. Those are scanners. That are they uh, well, well I, 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 I am not, not going to be able to answer that question, but I would say that they are. The reason I'll give is that, that they are is that at least we haven't heard any incident that has to do with explosions and stuff like that because um, those machines are capable of uh, detecting uh, any car or individual that is uh, coming, coming to that point. Way before you arrive there, he has already found you out. And so um, the fact that we have had a peaceful time in our airport and ex except for some miscreants that are, you know, trying to find their way into the into the tarmac uh, to climb the wings of the airplane and stuff, you know. So the military is doing quite well. I, uh, you know, so far so good. Um, so my guess is that those equipment that they have in place are working perfectly well. If they were not, uh, perhaps by now somebody would have slipped through and would have had an incident that we wouldn't be happy about. So, okay, um, let's, let's, let's go on yeah. today now. Uh, well, I know it will be a very long series. Right? Oh, well, um, we, we have uh, four clips, I mean, five clips to deal with. This is part one. So, the, the, um, the topic again, aviation development in Nigeria and the role of Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria in managing and securing Nigerian airports, part one. That's where we are. So, let's um, uh, quickly go to click one and then uh, take it from there. 
Uh, here we go. Preamble. The Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, FAN, is a public service organization. Take note of that word as against civil. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to explain something uh, you know, to you about uh, the, the fact that it's a public service rather than a civil service uh, organization. Statutorily responsible for the management and uh, security of all commercial airports in Nigeria. Its services are available for both uh, passenger and cargo airlines. Hence, they provide the conditions for efficient development and management of airport, I mean air transport and the services associated with it. An organized airport group, FAN was established by an act of the Nigerian National Assembly through Act Number no. 52 of 1999 as amended. An offshoot of Decree 9 of 1996. It is a parastatal of government under the supervision of Federal Ministry of Aviation. Decree 45 of 1976 first established Nigerian Airports Authority, the then known NAA, during the reign of Federal Military Government of Motala Mohammed slash Ulushigo Obasanjo in 1976. Its first board of directors was inaugurated in Lagos on July 11, 1978. By August 1995, a civil aviation reform was carried out by the then military government leading to the measure of the functions of Federal Civil Aviation Authority, FCAA, and those of FAA uh, to bring about FAN. This is the story of how we came about the FAN we have today. FAN has its headquarters within the premises of Motola Mohammed International Airport, Ikeja, Nigeria. Can we move quickly to page two? Okay, can you talk about the public service? Um, oh, yes, oh, yes. Thank you for reminding me of that. Um, uh, in, in the civil service is right there with, of course, civil servants giving you know service to Nigerians and where they can as, as actually uh, in money for for profit or whatever they they are allowed to do so for for government. But when you have a public service organization, it is an organization that is yet to serve the public without an intention to make profit. And then it, it can raise its own funds, you know, uh, create avenues of, um, of uh, any in, uh, income, but the income is meant to be invested fully in the service of the people of, uh, of Nigeria without aiming to conserve and make profit. So that, that's, you know, that's where is, uh, is different. And what's more, they can determine, based on their income profile, they can determine what they pay themselves as, as salary. As against the civil servants whose salary are programmed by and wages, wages, yes, and the wages and the uh, salaries uh, in a commission. So you, you, you see, you see what the, di what the difference. So if if you earn enough money to be able to pay your chief executive uh, 500 million as a, as an annual salary, so be it. You, for as long as you can justify it. Yeah, and, and, and but the point is, you must give the service to the public and make sure that the money earned is invested, you know, diligently and uh, profitably for, for, the, for the public, not for you, you know, so that's what uh, the kind of organization FAN is. So FAN is an organization that makes its own, it may get some allocations from, you know, from government, you know, to add to whatever they are aiming, but the point is they determine how they run. And the idea is serve the people of Nigeria and not necessarily make profit. So, okay, let's go to clip so two. That, clip. So clip two. That's clip two now. History yeah. of aviation. History of aviation in Nigeria. 
History has it that the first aviation activity in Nigeria took place in 1925 when, alarmed by a tense standoff between Kano residents and the then British colonial government officials, led to the British government instructing the commanding officer of the Khartoum Sudan based Royal Air Force RAF squadron to fly from Khartoum, Sudan to Kano City to assess the situation there. That was the first aviation activity that ever took place um, you know, uh, in Nigeria, and that was way back in 1925. You have you know, you oh, you listen to it. Oh, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm, glad, this, I'm, I'm, I'm glad this crossed your mind. Cool, yes, yes I, I'm glad this crossed your yeah. mind. But listen to, to, listen to the story. It's, uh, it's quite in interesting. So the then British colonial government officials led uh, to the British government instructing the commanding officer of the Khartoum uh, uh, Sudan-based Royal Air Force, RAF, squadron, to fly from Khartoum, Sudan, to Kano City to assess the situation there. The pilot flying a Bristol fighter warplane made a dangerous but safe landing on the horse race course in Kano. That's around the Pistrang Daddy. Yeah, so that's where he landed on the horse race course in Kano, marking the first recorded aviation activity in Nigeria. Dangerous. Very dangerous. It was hazardous, not just only dangerous, very hazardous. Um, the, 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 but that, that okay. bright pilot made it and landed safely there. After that hazardous but safe landing in Kano, the RAF, that is Royal Air Force, made it a regular and annual event, extended the route to cover Medjugorje. So they not only flew from Khartoum to, to Kano, they also flew, flew to Medjugorje. So you can see that the first two cities in Nigeria that saw aviation activity yeah. for the very first time remained Kano um, and, and Medjugorje. So this is, this is instructive. And so we must really uh, take time and find a way to celebrate well, that, <coughs> that, that, me, that, that, those two that, airports. That without the tire developing for would be really... Well, the, the, uh, the, it, it was a war jet, actually. Okay. It was a war jet. Uh, the, the Bristol uh, airplane, uh, you know, fi it was a fighter jet. I mean, not jet, but, uh, you know, you know they, they didn't problem. have jet yeah, at that time. It was all, uh, you know, it was all, you know, propeller. Uh, piston en uh, engines that they used in those days. <laughs> well, it was right. for rock oh yes, designed for rock terrain. Yeah, yeah. It was actually the, with, with very you know um, uh, powerful and strong uh, landing landing gears. So he was able to run, uh, land on the ro a hot, a hot race and then um, uh, track, and uh, was also able to do a, a, a short takeoff run. And, uh, you know, I'm free out of camera as well. So that's it. Now, a gentleman known as Bob Carpenter appears to be the earliest commercial aviation operator in Nigeria. With his light aircraft, the Havilland Moth, he undertook high-risk flights between Kano and Lagos using ray tracks as his guide to Lagos. Can you believe that? <laughs> At the time in question, navigation equipment were not in place, and uh, there was no way to tell where you were going. And, uh, that, 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 that means you won't fly very high. No, Can no. You push it, push that's it. why visual is a you know, visual you know, flying rule. You know, so uh, uh, that, uh, that was what uh, they, they did, and that was why each time there was hamatan or rain, they, they had difficulties, you know, really flying. Yeah, yeah. But that was what, what was going on at the time. The, the, the both captain the guy, you know, uh, them, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm, uh, I, um, it, it wasn't, I, I looked out for that, it wasn't recorded. The, the, you know, the particular year that, that you know, about Carpenter. And if you, if you look at the aviation activities in Nigeria, no one has ever celebrated this individual. No one has ever told Nigerians about the fact that a, a gentleman known as Bob Carpenter, you know, the, 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 definitely a foreigner, perhaps a Briton, you know, was the first 
to use the rail track. And guess what? A flight from, um, from Kano to Lagos uh, uh, at that time took a whole day. The same flight that we're making one hour right now. At that time, it took a whole day. <laughs> yeah, to, and then, of course, there were uh, regular stopovers for, for refueling because uh, the plane uh, available at that time, I'm going to show you the photograph of this okay. for fine time, and you see how small it was, and then imagine the kind of uh, fuel that would be on those wings, you know. <laughs> you know that's, uh, okay. So, yeah, so let's, uh, uh, let's move on. Uh, clip three, please. Yeah, we're there already. Uh, the history of aviation in Nigeria continues. By the early 1930s, another unnamed pilot was said to have carried a few fair-paying passengers in a seaplane between Lagos and Warri. Here you go. Warri has been added to the list of the early airports, and, uh, uh, and ironically, these airports are not developed in a way to show that uh, their historic uh, part they played in, uh, in the airport development, uh, and, or, or rather aviation development in Nigeria. And I hope somebody somewhere is listening, because uh, it's never too late to okay. celebrate our own. As the Royal Air Force annual flights created increased aviation activities in Nigeria, the need for aerodromes became inevitable. Based on this, a representative of the Air Ministry in London visited Nigeria to inspect landing grounds. Sites were selected and approved at Medjugorje, Oshobo, Lagos, Mina, Kanu, and Kaduna. If these places were really the, the first landing sites that were selected and approved for flight or aviation activities in Nigeria, you wonder why Oshobo is not prominent at the moment, and you wonder why Mina is not as prominent as it should be. <coughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. What I perceive is that Lagos swallowed Oshobo, and Kanu swallowed up Mina, or, or Kaduna swallowed up Mina, Oh, yeah. And people had because Kaduna is too close to Mina, mm. and everyone prefers okay, let's name Mina guys, you can just come Makes by. Makes sense. Let's, yeah. do, let, let's do Kaduna. Yeah. Our Shubu guys say, hey, leave us Shubu, Shubu, let, let, let's do Lagos. Uh, somewhat, uh, and. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. I, I, uh, from my uh, uh, knowledge of aviation, I understand exactly what you're talking about because if you were to take off from Kaduna to go to Mina, you would barely get to your uh, allocated um, uh, altitude before it's time for you to slow down and begin to descend in, into the city you are flying right. to. And so it doesn't make sense. And sometimes in, in, also, in, uh, for, 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 for some places, I, I had had to tell some friends, I don't know why I found it difficult taking flight uh, somewhere to Benin. I prefer to drive because sometimes the flights are always from 1231. And if I drive, I'll be in Benin before. If not for none of the roads are bad, then this is I'll be in Benin before before one. That's yeah, right. Before one. That's and that right. time before you get there, I would have rested, take some pandy there, and <laughs> soup, and, uh, and when you'll be landing and taking taxi, uh, I would already be cooling off already. Yeah. I, but there are, there are some just like Lagos stone, mm. but there are some other ones like Kaduna. Yeah. I told someone someone who was uh, flying from Abuja to Kaduna and I told the person I think it's wasting the time. Hey <laughs> guy, it's just about two hours. Uh, if the road is safe, just uh, I sit behind the wheel and uh, just Oh, well, uh, well, that's the sad thing of, uh, about what's going on in Nigeria today, because I remember uh, when uh, MTN first came into this country and uh, we are building their cell sites. My, my company was one of those that built some of the cell sites along the Kaduna uh, Road and, um, and uh, up until uh, even within the Kaduna City. If you visit the Angwarimi MTA premises, yeah. the, this, the MTN cell site in that premises was built by my company. And so I, I can tell you that uh, it, was, it, it, it was a safe, sweet time traveling from Abuja to Kaduna. Sometimes I was on that road at 2 a.m. I would, I, would, I would finish in, in Kaduna, pay a couple of visits to my uh, you know, uh, site, uh, the South African inspectors who, who, who occasionally will come around, you know, have a word with them at the extent of um, work for that particular day and especially when it's a weekend on a Friday, and I'll leave Kaduna at 9 p.m.
p.m. I don't think they're going to come back. Uh, well, I hope so. Everything and I'll leave Kaduna. Uh, uh, the, le the latest I had left Kaduna actually was about 11 p.m. And I headed out to Abuja. I arrived at Abuja at about after 1 a.m. And it was safe and nice. Everything, everything. And here I am. I always, but I can, I, can I try such a thing no, today? You, you try it someday again. <laughs> it, won't, it, won't, it won't ruin the medieval history. There are, yeah. there are so much fight mm. around Europe. Almost Denmark, everyone, Scotland, we are fighting until they got tired. And today they're all the most peaceful. They fought. <laughs> all the history books have uh, it that Denmark, yeah. uh, Sweden, all of them, Scotland, we're all fighting. Mm. But now, you go to history, you don't even see anybody even throwing the stone. Yeah. It's not the thing of Africa. Oh, and we want them to get tired. Oh, so. oh well. Okay, let's get really yes. to now. So, uh, the second paragraph of clip three, uh, by uh, 1935, the operations of the RAF were replaced by those of the Imperial Airways. So, you're going to listen carefully now and get how we came about about Nigeria awesome Nigeria Airways that we messed up with. Um, the Imperial Airways which flew regular airmail and passengers from London to Nigeria. Commercial aviation effectively came to Nigeria in 1936. Flying with a small four-engine aircraft, the Havilland DH-86, that was a model. I'm going to show you those uh, uh, airplanes. Um, a once a week flight traversing through Khartoum, Kano, Lagos took seven days to complete. A, a journey that is done in less than two hours today. <laughs> it took, uh, um, they, they were doing uh, 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 perhaps London, Khartoum, Khartoum, Kano, Kano, Lagos, and, uh, and, and those took seven days to, to accomplish. Uh, how uh, how far we've gone in life. But they're also very happy with themselves. <laughs> yeah, that's Click correct. Four. Click four. History of aviation in Nigeria continues. Sir Bernard Bodilan. You remember the Bodilan Street in the one uh, in of, the one of Nigerian's governor general. That's Bodilan. correct. The, the likes of Lord Lugard, Oliver uh, Lititi, and several. Others. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, you are going to see the photograph <laughs> of the gentleman looking sweet and nice. Um, uh, Sir Bernard Bordelon was recorded to have flown on the first ever commercial flight from Lagos. Flights in Nigeria were quite challenging for pilots due to harsh weather conditions, especially hamatan and rain in particular. The first emergency landing near Medigree in 1937 took engineers riding on horsebacks with their two kids from Kano to Medigree a whole day to arrive at the scene of the landing. <laughs> Flight from Kano to Lagos also took a whole day to complete due to the poor state of early technology and the need for en route refueling stops. With the United Kingdom Colonial Air Navigator orders, as legislative authority. The control and administration of civil aviation were vested in the directorates of public works of West African countries who floated West African Airways Corporation WAC, as the WAAC, and charged it to develop air services in and between African territories. Let's run quickly to clip five. The history continues there. Yeah. On attaining independence in 1957, Ghana pulled out of the airline company. Remember, it was a West African thing, yeah. the WAAC. But when Ghana attained uh, 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 independence in 1957, it pulled out of the company. And in August 1958, the Nigerian government, in partnership with the British Airways I mean, Overseas Airways Corporation, the BOAC. I remember the, in those days, the DC-10. Uh, or rather, not DC-10, but V, VC-10. BOAC, VC-10. As a little boy, I think I remember the, the, you know, those uh, airplanes. <laughs> and Air the Dempster Alliance, uh, I, I'll take that again. The Nigerian, the Nigerian government, in partnership with the British Overseas Airways Corporation, BOAC, and Air the Dempster Alliance, formed the West African Airways Corporation Nigeria Limited, which later metamorphosed into Nigeria Airways.
this is the genesis of the airline industry in, in Nigeria. So, I love that plane. Uh, oh, well, yeah, that was... Uh, nice that, plane. Most uh, yeah. times it lands in water. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, uh, and it that's, land in water. Uh, that, that's, uh, water uh, that's the uh, plane that they use in those days to, to shuttle. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, flash some of those photographs so that our viewers nice will have, a, uh, have fun. Nice oh, well, that is the, uh, the Havilland Heklus. Uh, this one was named City of Cairo. You have one that was named City of Cairo. Well, can you carry more? Uh, well, I think at uh, the time in question, they, they, didn't, they didn't carry up to between 8 and 10 passengers, actually. Okay, you know, and, um, well, they had fun flying at, at less than, uh, at less than, we'll less than 200 we'll kilometers an hour. Our houses and be looking at, okay, is that yeah so those were the routes that uh, you know the the, the, the british overseas airways uh, you know applied in, in uh, you can see the route coming to down to africa going all through the edges of north africa and heading south you know and, and, and coming towards nigeria can you see the, yeah, the back line exciting. and then you see the another one that took them all the way through india to australia and, then there was and, no, and, there was and, no flag and, touching and South Lagos Africa. around. And that time, so, no, nothing was touching Lagos. Um, well, no, not not at the no, not at the no, time. Not time at the yeah, time. it was it was it was initially Canon, okay. Canon and Medjugorje. Okay. Yeah. So move to the. Let's uh, quickly uh, our time is up. And this was in 1935. That is a gentleman, Bernard, Bernard Henry Bobola, the, 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 um, the former the, governor general of Nigeria. The, and the story about this man is so excited me that um, I think uh, we we should begin to. To celebrate uh, that man, because there were a couple of things that the British government wanted to do at the time, and um, uh, the man resisted and chose the option that was best for Nigeria. And at the time that even the Nigerians that existed, there was this uh, cocoa issue that happened, and um, uh, Britain was going to be exploiting you know Nigeria, and the cocoa merchants at the time resisted. And when Bodilon was uh, confronted with him, he, he told he stared the British government straight in the eyes, and said and said and said to them, "No, this is not um, going to happen." And of course, they bought his idea that it wasn't going to happen. And so he was really loved and celebrated in Nigeria. You know, so that's uh, Bodilon for you. Um, can we move on to others and quickly uh, leave Thanks. this studio? Oh. Mm. Is that all we have? Okay, um, that, that's, that, so that, that's about it. We'll be, uh, back, we'll be coming back next week to actually go through this. It's really very nice uh, knowing some things here. When we look about Nigeria, I think it, the, the, the aviation industry would have taken off from Lagos, Calabar, <laughs> where the colonial master stayed earlier, or even yeah. Lokoja, mm. where Lord West and Lord Lugard had stayed. But uh, mm. some of we're heading kind of and uh, we're right. learning, we learning so much. And we, we need to really um, uh, create history and make money out of creation of history. Those early, those early airports, even those that are not in use now, like the Shobo and the, and the uh, Mina and, and the rest of them, uh, and Wari, we should be able to recreate what they were looking like at the time and make them places Tourist that people, uh, people can uh, go and do some tourism. And uh, uh, you see, we have to be more creative and, and in money as a, as a nation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it reminds me, so, so sorry, let me tell you this quickly. It reminds me of a, of, of a trip uh, somewhere in New York where we were paying $150. I mean, it was sponsored by, I attended a course, by the way, that, that was uh, uh, in 2009 in Manhattan. And they took us out for sightseeing and we, we went in a place where they paid $150 for each person that went in there just for about 10, 15 minutes to look around. Guess what? I saw masquerade head from my hometown, Newi, the one we call Ike Dinodogu. That's what we call it in my place. I saw the masquerade head displayed for me to pay $150 to come and see. When the real thing, when the real thing is lying in my village. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, God in any case. Mm. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. Thank you okay. very much. And uh, next week, uh, Monday, uh, we'll be doing that same uh, 8 a.m. here. But now, let's take a break very quickly. When we come back, we'll be actually uh, some of the teachings of the Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him. And uh, we'll look at Arafat a little and touch on any cabin and expectations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we go through this public holiday, having uh, observed uh, the two record prayers yesterday after this break.